welcome to Podswoggle Wrestling Podcast with Entertainment and the Podswoggle Title Tournament live on Twitch. This is your host, Mullet. If you're new here, every single month, the boys from Podswoggle Wrestling Podcast with Entertainment on the Arcade Audio Network bring you live computer simulated video game wrestling from the most recent 2K wrestling video game uh, to determine who the Podswoggle champion is and also determine who gets powers, responsibilities, on our weekly podcast. What's going on, B. Sumner? We have a great show for you here tonight. It is August, which means it's time for our third annual Lethal Lottery. Every single year, the boys of Potswell will have a draft on our podcast. If we were to make our own wrestling companies, that draft determines who the participants are for the tournament. Uh, normally, we do tag teams. This year, we're just doing singles matches before we get to Battle Bowl, the old crappy WCW concept of a battle royal at the end of the evening. The heels and heels will also be having a battle royal to determine their champion later on. And this is a big one because, as uh, was pointed out today, the winner of this will be Swoggle Squad Champion through Pod Slam. Our last stream before Pod Slam, a wrestling. Uh, I'm sorry, not a wrestling uh, marathon. Uh, Pod Slam, a podcast marathon, benefiting Connors Cure September 22nd. About three weeks away at the IO Theater in Chicago, Illinois, live on our website, live on Twitch, live everywhere you can think. Um, Going to be a, a night full of plugs. We have seven great undercard matches, two battle royals. Uh, I'm going to announce some Swoggle Mania matches tonight. There is This night is jam-packed. Bear with me tonight. I am um, set up on my usual chair um, and a little bit of pain from uh, some things that are going on. But I'm all right. I'm here. If Jim Ross can pass a kidney stone commentating on an entire pay-per-view, I can have whatever's going on in my body and commentate on some video game wrestling. Uh, I'm also going to try to get through this so I can play me some Fire Pro Wrestling before I go to bed again, um, which hopefully will be a stream very, very, very soon, uh, which, again, we'll talk about throughout the night. Um, So, yeah, so let's get it kicked off. Let's get it underway uh, like I said, we have seven matches to get through. We are going to start with uh, one of Rich's representatives versus one of my representatives. So if you didn't listen to part one of the, the draft podcast, random number generator determined who the uh, representatives were for uh, the matches. But if you decided to not take your draft pick, I would search for that person on Community Creations and whatever the first non-wrestling entry was would become your pick. So, Rich, your current champion, he has a plethora of picks. Uh, he chose to just go with his pick, in this case, Andrade Cien Almas. Uh, my pick was Johnny Gargano, which I was not going to give Rich the satisfaction of. So I typed in Johnny Gargano and came up with a different Johnny that will be my representative. I'll be represented by Johnny Cage. From Mortal Kombat. Uh, wonder this goes on to Battle Bowl to face the Predator. Let's start the evening off. Of course, Andrade San almost not into the game this year, which is weird. I'm sure he'll be in 2K19. This is our next to last Podswoggle title tournament on this year's game. Of course, Swoggle Mania will be on uh, our goodbye to this year's game. That, uh, I believe I've announced the date before, but in case you wanted to bookmark it, we are rapidly approaching that as well. Sunday, October 14th, uh, time to be determined. Live on Twitch will be uh, Swoggle Mania 4. Johnny Cage is huge. I don't feel he's that tall, but I'll take it in this case. Almas is going to be undersized, going to have to use his speed and his resources. Already working on the arm for the Hammerlock DDT. Johnny Cage looks like a, like an explorer somewhere. And he's getting thoroughly trounced thus far by Almas. Almas already looking for a pin. Cage says, not today. Cage, Cage is really tall. I don't know if Almas is just particularly short. And again, this could have been Johnny Gargano, but I said fuck that. K 
cage, kind of surrounding Almas, jumping over him. What's going on, White and or Nerdy? Johnny Cage cannot decide what to do with himself. He should be beating up Andrade San Almas. Uh, wrestling Andrade San Almas is Johnny Cage from Street Fighter. I'm sorry, from Mortal Kombat. Misspoke. Uh, he was the random selection um, when I searched for Johnny Gargano. Andrade is a top 10 wrestler in the world right now. Don't at me. Hey, Habert, you are 100% right. Andrade's killing it. He's been a top 10 wrestler for, for some time. But can he beat a narcissistic actor turned Mortal Kombat fighter? There's a nice splash to the back by Almas on Johnny Cage. It's weird dynamics there on a body slam attempt. Just meant the cage was going to get the uh, the reverse DDT counter. Cage looking for a suplex on Almas. Hold them up there. Oh, almost a brain buster. Cage second rope wants Almas to get to his feet. Double axe handle drops down. Johnny Cage is so tall. Good lord. Cage going to drag Almas, springboard him off. Body slam attempt, countered by Almas into his own reverse DET. Almas looking for a pin. One count only. Why is Johnny Cage 4 TV? I don't know. I honestly don't know why they made him like the tallest human being I've ever fucking seen. He's the size of his own ego. Hopefully it doesn't end like uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation where he just gets his neck snap unceremoniously. Sorry, I'm finding a lot of yawns. It's like I'm recording married with movies. But those I'm able to... That's so no, no, no. I mean like I... Uh, we... I... <laughs> Way to put me on blast about the amount of pills I've taken. Everyone thinks I'm fucking Scott Hall on the couch. Just because of that, could you get me that water from earlier, please? Thank you. Uh, that's it for now. I need Johnny Cage to stop getting his fucking head plastered into the turnbuckle by Andrade San Almas. I'm just waiting for Vince to hate how long that name is and just make him Andrade. Or just Cien Almas. It's coming. I'm, I feel it. Thank you. Cage throws Almas to the floor. Is Cage looking for a dive here? Johnny Cage looking to take a risk. The big man gonna fly. Tope Suicida through the ropes. Oh, this is awesome, Chant. Almost kicks Cage off. Almost throws Cage back in the ring. I feel like this is Johnny Cage. Uh, I feel like this Johnny Cage is a Duke Nukem that went wrong somehow. Almost a schoolboy, no deadlift, powerbomb, sit-out variation. Kick to the butt of Cage. Are you just making cereal for yourself? Yeah. You ate dinner. Yeah. Did you not have enough dinner? Very true. Almost getting frustrated here. Well, not too frustrated. Almost a little too tranquilo at the moment on Cage. Oh, here it is. Hammerlock. DDT, no cage reversed. Again, maybe a little too cocky by Almas. Cage with a code breaker. On Almas, center of the ring. Cage the pin. Two. Johnny Cage gets the victory over Andrade Cien Almas. So we have the Predator and we have Johnny Cage in Battle Bowl. Rich has one representative. I have one representative. Going on to Battle Bowl. Almas 
that one moment of cockiness of his old tranquilo self cost him. The hammerlock DDT was countered, and Johnny Cage gets the victory. What does that mean? Thank you. Johnny Cage. Yes, Cage was the random of Gargano, so that's one of my randoms paying off. And, of course, if that was Johnny Gargano, he would have lost. <laughs> Moving on. I'm incredibly mean. Rich has lost one of his uh, five representatives. Will he lose another one? Let's find out. Yes, let's find out. So, um, so something I knew was going to happen when I did this random thing. So this is ran Rich's random selection for Tommaso Ciampa. Kind of funny synergy here. Uh, there was a ton of just variant Garganos and Ciampas. And for whatever reason, the first non-wrestler that came up when I was searching Tommaso Ciampa was this kid's character of himself, Kevin Shatino. <laughs> so this is what Rich has. Instead of Tommaso Ciampa is Kevin Shatino. And literally in the notes, literally in the notes for like him, like like what his character about is. Hey, please download my character more than my brothers. <laughs> That's the only thing that he wrote. Uh, he'll be wrestling AJ Styles. <laughs> I, uh, like, I don't know why I want to say his name like Pablo Chacon. Kevin Chatino. Kevin Chatino. Oh, that's who we have. Uh, so. Uh, Rich, you could Tommaso Ciampa, but you, your dumbass is Kevin Giottino. I will point out, though, AJ Styles, you can do it, Kevin. Uh, AJ Styles has been nominated for this tournament. This is the 31st uh, Podswoggle title tournament we've ever done, uh, not counting March of Madness, Swoggle Manias, and whatnot. Um, and AJ Styles has been nominated on multiple occasions. Uh, I'm going to try to go back quickly to see how many times. And he has a very poor record. One of Spencer's two picks here. Let me see how many times I have AJ Styles on the record as being involved in this whole process here. Um, what have you been in that year's game? I don't think so. I mean, got to Kevin Shino looks Jack. Kevin Shino looks like a little bit of a maybe Matt Cross a little bit. Got snap suplex. Uh, it's one for AJ. He's looking good so far. No, no elbow pads. We'll see that effect. That's a big ass high knee to the face of AJ Styles, and a nice senton. I'm liking some of the the moves here for Kevin Shatino. Kevin Shatino wins this. I'm gonna uh, request he be on the cover of 2K19 instead of AJ Styles. Two, three. AJ looking for a nice reverse bloody Sunday there on Kevin Shatino. He sounds like the name of an ABC family character. Sounds like a nice boy, you know, trying to make it after all. AJ grinding him down with a headlock. So, yeah, so this is the fifth time. No, this is the sixth time AJ Styles is going for the Podswoggle Championship in his career. Not a lot of guys get one opportunity. It's AJ Styles' sixth opportunity at this. He sounds like an actor on an ABC TJF sitcom. That's actually what I meant. I just misspoke. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He was just in the Elimination Chamber. The seventh time out of 31, cha out of 31 tournaments AJ Styles has had to become Podswoggle Champion. Stun gun there on Kevin Shatino. The heels and heels are here. Nice springboard acai moonsault inside the ring. Lion salt, if you will. The heels and heels championship. We got two more undercard matches before we get to the heels and heels uh, battle royal. I sadly could not find Cara Maria from the real world. I was so disappointed. I really there was a, several challenge characters, but no Cara Maria. So someone get on that. So the heels and heels can get Car Maria for one tournament. Kevin Shatino, top rope. Oh, he's asking AJ to get up instead of looking for a, a splash or a moonsault. Nice blockbuster from the top rope by Kevin Shatino. He's feeling it. It's the biggest match of his career because he's a child. 
kick to the midsection. Caught Dragon Screw Leg Whip. Spencer, avert your eyes. It's not a lion's halt unless you do uh, that weird yell Jericho does when he flips. AJ got Chitino set up on the top. Superplex, maybe. Superplex by AJ. Now we have a des design mission. Please design a car, Maria. Oh, AJ Ushigarashi. Oh, Shatino blocked. His arm got caught in the ropes. He is a greenhorn. And AJ sent over the top rope. They had, of course, we've already seen Johnny Bananas before. They had a Corey. They had a Sarah. I think that was it. There's no CT either, which is sad, except all the characters that actually have CT, like the brain injury. Uh, no, Tyler, you did not miss Random Jeff. Random Jeff, uh, our next match will be AD, uh, will be just Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe. And then you will get to see Random Jeff in our first half um, kind of mini main event. Pull that in the Heels and Heels title. And then we'll do the other three matches later on. We got PCO later on. We got Walter coming up later on. We got another fucking Mortal Kombat character coming on. Kevin Chitino and AJ still really battling it out here on the floor. Chitino gets AJ back into the ring. He gets back in the ring as well. AJ blocks. Shatino over the top rope. Shatino forearm. Shatino with a springboard knee strike to the head. I'm late. What have I missed? David, you've only missed one match. Johnny Cage has defeated Andrade San Almas. And AJ Styles is currently beating up Kevin Shatino. Rich's random pick uh, when I searched for Tommaso Ciampa. It was just this child's character. Good, got caught watching Double Dare 2000. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Springboard leg drop by AJ on Chitino. Count of two. Kevin kicks out. Under this, looking to join the Predator and Johnny Cage in our first ever eight person battle bowl. There's another reverse Bloody Sunday by AJ. AJ running. AJ top rope. Looking for a spiral tap. Looking for a 450. What's he look, thinking here? And he just wants Chitino to get to his feet. Oh, went for a cross body, and Shatino caught him with a T-bone. Over a T-bone suplex. This Kevin Shatino showing me something. Kick misses. AJ looking for that sit-out flapjack face buster. Into a pin. Shatino middle of the ring. Count of two, he kicks AJ off. AJ goes flying into the ropes. I'm watching Double 2000. I'm surprised Nickelodeon hasn't been sued for concussion. Oh, trust me, uh, Mark Summers has actually uh, CTE. So. AJ, he's setting him up. Phenomenal forearm. Nope, Shatino starts to get up. I think that's part of the problem with AJ in this game. Phenomenal forearm takes such a setup. He doesn't go for the, uh, never goes for the uh, Styles Clash instead. There's another uh, Springboard Acai Moonsault in the ring. Got scolded for calling an Alliance Halt. Oh, I won't. Shatino now. Uh, we saw this cost Andrade earlier. The cockiness. Playing to the crowd a little bit too much, maybe. Chitino's got AJ up on his shoulders, TKO. Are we going to see the upset of the decade? No, he didn't take advantage of it. What's he going for here? Trapping one arm from AJ, and then he's going to smash the other one with his foot. Oh, will that work on the arm and the shoulder? Going to white and go for a pin after that TKO, because maybe he's setting him a first finisher here. What does Kevin Shatino have in store for AJ Styles? AJ, whatever it was, had it scouted, caught the foot, and hit him with a clothesline. AJ, to the apron. He's going to ask Kevin Shatino to get to his feet. Is he thinking? The phenomenal forearm. Yes, he is, and he busts Shatino wide open with it. Center of the ring. The cover. One, two. No, Kevin Shatino. This kid's wet dream kicks out. AJ hit him with his best shot. He busted him open. And this, this up-and-comer, this young, hungry tiger is kicked out of it. This kid's got heart. AJ, second rope. Asking him to get to his feet. Oh, went for another forearm, I think. And Chitino just 
fucking threw him away. He's got Psycho on his pants, I just noticed. Oh, close two count there. AJ crashed hard, and Shatino almost got the victory with it. This is one of two chances Spencer has. Become champion, going into pod slam. Top rope for Shatino. Asking AJ now. Get to a vertical base. Huge missile drop kick. And again, wasting time. Building momentum in the corner, some would say. But instead, I think he's just taking... Not taking advantage of being uh, currently in control of the best, one of the best wrestlers on the planet. Now he's going after the wheels of AJ. AJ scouts it, brushes him off. Nice Japanese arm drag. And there's a nice uh, counter arm drag of by Shatino. Oh, and there's a version of a AJ's own uh, flapjack into a pin. That one's with a, um, a full Nelson attached to it. Chitino does not get the victory, however. It's been a very good match. AJ fights Chitino off. Backspin. Oh, but he's going for the heel hook. Heel hook, and he has Chitino way too close to the ropes. His foot was right there. AJ, Shining Wizard. Shining Wizard, uh, back kick to the head. More so not a knee, but just an insiguri. AJ for the pin on Kevin Chitino. Count of two only. Got to think, I don't know if that heel hook was a finisher or not. I don't think it was because I think AJ's going to set him up now for a second phenomenal forearm. If he hits this, you have to believe that's over. Phenomenal forearm to the head of Kevin Chitino. This kid gave it one hell of an effort, but AJ Styles is moving on. No! Oh! How did this kid kick out twice? From the phenomenal form, AJ just can't win another Asai Moonsault. He's hit him with two phenomenal forearms. And this kid's gumption, this kid's guts, is taking the best wrestler possibly in the world to the limit. Chitino blocks the suplex. You did that WWE thing where you give away the false finish. I just was thinking I had it. Oh, there's a 1916 almost. Basically the reverse bloody Sunday. AJ's getting to his feet. Chitino, kick to the midsection. What's he going for here? Oh, he's not going for a kudo driver. Is he going for a, a cop killer? Oh, a cop killer! By Kevin Chitino on AJ Styles. He hasn't taken one of those since Homicide back in the days of TNA. Count of two. The kid did it! I don't believe it! AJ Styles streak of futility in this tournament continues and this unknown this rookie Kevin Shatino has defeated AJ Styles one of the most vicious moves in wrestling it's been banned practically everywhere the cop killer the kudo driver whatever you want to call it Defeats AJ Styles. Rich now has two participants in Battle Bowl. And one of them is this guy. Look at this guy. He looks like Eric Young and Tommaso Ciampa and Son of Havoc had a fucking circle jerk. And this guy came out of it. Someone needs to find this kid and tell him he beat AJ Styles. Uh, he's asleep. It's past his bedtime. The Psycho, Psycho Shatino, is your winner. So we've lost Andrade San Almas and AJ Styles, but we have Johnny Cage and Kevin Shatino. This is what we do on a monthly basis, folks. You know the drill. All right. Well, next, this is just a good match. Next, there's not going to be any uh, fun and games. Well, there's going to be plenty of fun because of, of who's wrestling here. Uh, but yeah, it's just Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe. The Psycho Kid. I like that. Yeah, it's just Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe. Uh, Rich's representative, Seth Rollins, and uh, Augie's sole representative, Samoa Joe. That's uh, on Nitro. Sure, let's do it.
of course, as I had mentioned uh, earlier on, a lot of stuff to talk about here. Um, of course, we are uh, just a little over three weeks away from Pod Slam, a, a podcast marathon benefiting Connor's Cure. Donations are open now, so if you guys are planning on donating um, a couple of times or multiple times, the most possible attorney thing is Mullet being sure AJ Styles won only for him to lose to a child. You're darn right. Um, Joe coming out of the gate hot with an overhead belly to belly suplex. Wendy! Joe is kicking Rollins' ass early. Both these guys have been very impressive in March of Madness the past two years. Rollins has been in the Elite Eight. Uh, I think Joe and Rollins both in the Elite Eight uh, multiple times over the past couple years. And there was just an uh, uh, inside out power bomb, sunset flip style by Rollins on the Joe. Uh, so, yeah, so you can go to arcadeaudio.net slash podslam. The whole roster of shows is there. Donations are open. Uh, if you know somebody that should sponsor the damn thing or, or, or sponsor any part of it, let them know that sponsorship is open by emailing potsamlive at gmail.com. Uh, it's going to be an amazing, amazing day of shows. The All Star Rumble uh, is going to be back in a big way. Got a lot of surprises in store for you there. Um, right, so make sure Potsam's on the front of your mind. Already the best match in Nitro history. It's been pretty good, I'll tell you that much. Uh, and also, if I mentioned earlier, October 14th, Swoggle Mania. I uh, actually, is this Swoggle Mania 5? Is this Swoggle Mania 5? I think I've ever spoken said 4 earlier. Yeah, it's Swoggle Mania 5, baby. Swoggle Mania 5, October 14th. Uh, I haven't really announced that many mess, uh, matches yet. Gonna start with that tonight. Some, uh, some Twitch exclusives. As Rollins and Joe are really battling out here on the floor, there's another vicious dragon screw leg whip by Joe on Rollins. The count is at six. It can't be the best match. I don't see a Mortal Kombat costume anywhere. Huge drop kick by Rollins. These guys are in that dangerous corner of the, the ring. I must point out there, there has to be a winner here. The count is at eight. We might have to restart this thing. Oh no, Rollins is running back in. Count of nine. Augie, no, Rollins. Rollins broke the count, I believe. No, Rollins just takes the count out. Rollins looked like he was going to attack Joe, stopped himself, and now Seth Rollins has got a cheap but nevertheless impressive victory over Samoa Joe via count out. So that means Augie has already lost his one chance to become champion because Samoa Joe just got counted out, and Seth Rollins is looking to join uh, Braun Strowman, Thanos, Brock Lesnar, and EC3 as a two-time Podswoggle champion. He's going to Battle Bowl, folks. Didn't give me a chance to announce my Swoggle Mania match. Rollins not working by the hour here. Nitro, I, uh, we gotta go to break, I guess, on Nitro. Seth Rollins is your winner. That means Rich now has three participants in Battle Bowl. Seth Rollins, Kevin Shatino, and The Predator. They're looking good for Rich thus far. Um, so before we get to the next match, allow me to officially announce. Uh, so the past two years, we've had some some loser leaves Podswoggle matches. Uh, of course, we lost uh, Vince Russo one year. We lost Hacksaw Jim Duggan the other year. Well, let's lose one more, and let's see um, which one of them can make it 2-0. and Because the winners of those matches will be wrestling each other at Swoggle Mania 5. It'll be Ricky Morton versus TJP live on Swoggle Mania 5. That one actually is going to be... Both characters are in the game, oddly enough, now. So that's just funny as it is. Um, that'll be Swoggle Mania 5, October 14th. But I have a feeling we might see somebody else at Swoggle Mania after we're about to debut him. So first, <laughs> goodbye TJP. But first, uh, Tope's one of Tope's two picks, of course is fucking Kenny Omega. He will be wrestling. Uh, an offhand comment of mine that Rich decided to take to heart, Random Jeff. Now, what Random Jeff is, is I literally went and generated a random number that corresponded with everything about Random Jeff. His look, his moves, his entrance, all of it. And that is what Random Jeff is, folks. He's rated a 50 he is horrifying. He is random Jeff. 
And he's about to wrestle the literal number one wrestler in the world, according to the PWI and every wrestling critic known to man. It's Kenny Omega versus Random Jeff. Uh, yeah, he's uh, like kind of a a purplish, uh, some crazy blue hair. He's got some antlers. He's got some butterfly wings on the back. This is some DDT shit. He's got uh, Razor Ramon's elbow pad, a really dirty like Luke Harper, Dusty Rhodes top. You know what that top reminded me of when I first saw it? What? You know in Mean Girls when they cut the holes in Regina Jordan's face? <laughs> Her bra showing through. That's very true. That's what it looks like. Like, like he's wearing baloney yeah. underneath the white suit. Yeah. Uh, so all of his, literally, music, attributes, all of it is randomized. I think his moves are randomized. I think he has Kurt Hawkins moves, so Rich is doubly fucked. And all of his ratings were randomized. So I think he has like a one in something, and then he has like a hundred in something, just because that's how the random numbers came out. You know what makes it? The tiny fairy wings. I'll just wait until you see his entrance. Uh, again, I want to point out he's wrestling Kenny fucking Omega. <laughs> the best bout machine who is dope as fuck on Fire Pro Wrestling, if I can just keep saying that. Uh, again, some point this year, I don't know if it's going to be a live stream, but it'll definitely be, uh, possibly might be a, a Podswoggle YouTube exclusive. We are doing the first annual Podswoggle Pinnacle Tournament, the P1 Pinnacle. It's going to be our version of the G1 on Fire Pro Wrestling. It's going to be two blocks, ten guys apiece. It is going to be simulated Fire Pro, which is the best simulated wrestling. Sorry, no offense to 2K, and we've been doing it for years, but just wait until you see Fire Pro. It's going to knock your socks off. Random Jeff has already been Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight Champion seven times. All right, so we know Kenny Omega's interest. This is great. Yeah, we love you, Kenny. But you can't hear he's coming out to the heel big boss man theme. What are those pants? I don't even know. He's got TJP's video screen, some No Way Jose shit going on. He is the definition of throwing shit on a wall and seeing what sticks. Random Jeff. Set your stopwatches at home. I don't think this is going to take very long. He's very serious. You know, he's... Watch your antlers. Yeah, there's Random Jeff. Random and crazy, trying to prove he still can. Oh, very respectful bow. He knows. He knows how it works. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see Kenny Omega rip this guy's head off. Yeah, Omega's not taking this very seriously. The bell's rung. We are underway. Uh, I don't even know what happened. Let's see if Kenny can get six stars out of this guy. He just ran it. Oh, what a drop kick by Random Jeff! And a big kick to to boot. All right, Random Jeff is looking good so far. And as soon as I say that, there's a body slam counter and a hurricane runner by Kenny Omega. I feel like Kenny Omega would think this is hilarious. It's not a squash. He got some offense, and he got more offense in than Baron Corbin and Kevin Owens at SummerSlam. Oh, there's a stiff knee right to the, the weird face of Random Jeff. In honor of Random Jeff, I am wearing a, uh, a Jeff Goldblum t-shirt right now. Yo, coming at you live from the Denver airport is Caribbean Kid. We got a... Oh, he blocked the coup de gras. Omega went for a coup de gras, like is the the another former uh, Bullet Club leader, and there's a Pele kick by Random Jeff. Jeff sends Omega off the ropes. Big back elbow. I got a layover till 1 a.m., so I'm here all night. Well, Kirby and Kid are here just in time for Random Jeff. We already have Johnny Cage, Seth Rollins, and little child fanboy Kevin Chitino in Battle Bowl, along with the Predator. One of these men will join them. We got the heels and heels battle royal after this. Omega. A stiff shot to the wings. And a kick the arm of Random Jeff. Random Jeff sent over the top rope. Really, this is Random Jeff's best chance is to go for a uh, count out. What is Omega doing? Oh my god! A twisting. I think that was a Phoenix splash. I couldn't even see him. He flew off the screen 
even against random Jeff Kenny Omega. He's put on the best match he can. Random Jeff is not that far from what I've seen at the Winnipeg Indies. <laughs> random Jeff. All right, so we literally just saw the same thing happen with Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe. So, like, legitimately, Omega needs to be careful here. Or depending on which end of the which end you feel. Oh, random Jeff needs to be careful. The count is at seven. Again, if the double count out, we will redo it. All right, Omega gets random Jeff back into the ring. Omega doesn't want to be known as the guy that needed a count out to beat random Jeff. Oh, rain trigger on random Jeff, who looks like he just died. Omega could probably pin him, but he doesn't. Oh, block the punch. Random Jeff with an elbow. Oh, he went for something, and Omega just shoot him off. Kick. Uh, this is going to be dead center of the ring. No! The one-wing angel countered by Random Jeff. Random Jeff has countered the one-wing angel. It's his only chance. Oh, there's a... a I don't know what that is. I, maybe that's his finisher? The count. Count of two. No, Omega kicks out at two. Random Jeff almost beat Kenny Omega. Random Jeff blocked the one wing angel, hit his finisher, and Omega kicked out of it. Random Jeff is so slow. I believe he's something like 570 pounds as well. I know he doesn't look it, but that's just what he is. That's Curtis Axel's finisher. <laughs> I think I'm almost positive he got Kurt Hawkins' moves. But again, Kurt Ax Curtis Axel, Kurt Hawkins, one of the two. I have no idea. Random Jeff again, throwing Omega over the top. So Random Jeff's reversal rating has to be... I think it is one of the ones that's at 100. But again, like, his leg power is at, like, 10. Like, he's rated a 50. Look, he's horrible. He's the worst person in the game by, like, 20. So Omega just needs to get his shots in, and then he'll be fine. Yeah, just wear him down. Oh, shit, he might tap to this. I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's Random Jeff. Literally putting poor random Jeff to sleep. Well, random Jeff gets out of it. Side headlock of his own. The fact that he got a two count on Kenny Omega. Tope loses the random Jeff. Back elbow by Omega. Another counter by random Jeff, though. Another kick to the stomach. Punch. All right, here it is. Is it going to be Kreutz? Yep. Kreutz Wrath by Omega right onto the wings into the pin hooks the leg one two ran no random Jeff kicked out oh there was not a lot of umph behind it but he kicked out Omega is shocked random Jeff to his feet up on the shoulders one winged angel on random Jeff takes care of the leg away from the ropes and it is over it was such an effort but Kenny Omega defeats Random Jeff Tope is now in Battle Bowl <laughs> there's the seven stars he got his finisher off he hit the shot but then Kreutz Wrath and then the one wing angel that nobody kicks out of and that was all she wrote for Random Jeff. But I have a feeling we might see Random Jeff again. Might have to add him to the plans for Swoggle Mania. Even as a simulation, Kenny has a five-star match with anybody. Kenny Omega moving on the battle ball with Rollins, Shatino, Cage, and Predator. We're going to add three more to that list in just a little bit. But now let's determine who the Heels and Heels champion is going to be. As we head into our last tournament before Swoggle Mania. Gonna go to the six man battle royal. Starting with from the roster. We have, of course, it wouldn't be a tournament without a Bella twin. We have Brie Bella. Where are you at, Brie? There she is. Everyone's favorite heel, Becky Lynch. And because I guess they're going for the the current storyline uh, with Brie, Maurice will be the roster representatives. The custom representatives 
are going to be Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Beyonce. Oop, went the wrong thing. And of course, your current reigning defending heels and heels champion. The monster herself, Space Oprah. I don't know why Beyonce's the best rated out of all of them, but that's just the way that it is. Let's turn that title on and let's have us a battle royal for the Heels and Heels Championship. Space Oprah. That's she's a, a crowd favorite. Birdie Joe Danielson versus Moreau Skyman Zanin. WrestleMania, let's say uh, 25 years. WrestleMania 60? Yeah, that should be good. Anything's better than Izzy. She's the queen. Duh. <laughs> So this will be a good uh, indication of how this battle royal is going to play out for the men later on. But again, they're going to have eight guys in that. And, and by the way, they gave me a huge list of things I couldn't find. As I mentioned, Cara Marie earlier. Couldn't find Regina George, which Sam just mentioned earlier, which would have been funny. Couldn't find uh, a Miss Piggy. A bunch of things I couldn't find. So if I'd found enough, we were going to do uh, an eight. But of course, I can only find these. So this is what we have to do. Oh, the entrance is on. Whoops. Well, it's, we'd see Space Opera. That's fine. Here comes Bree. Uh, her fake sister, Sophia, is a former Heels and Heels champion. No, I'm sorry, Jesse. Comes Becky Lynch. Is it Mickey James in the game? I think she is. Not 100% positive. Comes Becky Lynch. Oh, she even comes out with her old uh, French entrance. Maurice, former Divas champion. Here comes that uh, Beyonce. Yep, that's Beyonce. Oh, look at the pyro for Beyonce. I mean, it's, it is fucking Beyonce. God, I hate that live recorded NXT arena noise. Yeah, it's, it's awful, isn't it? Here comes Ariel from The Little Mermaid. I guess I have legs, Ariel. Would have to be I have legs, Ariel. She would automatically win because that's not your fins touch the ground; it's your feet. So maybe it's a poor strategy. Beyonce is such a star. They brought her. They brought Pyro to NXT. Where? Were... All right, Ariel. Basically, it looks like a, a Eve Marie. Here comes Space Oprah. <laughs> Zach, I don't know why she's coming up the Zack Ryder's video and WCW Sting's theme. But that's what's... No, she shouldn't. They can't hear that anyway. They're the lucky ones. Space Oprah. The legend. She won it in the chamber last month. A dominating performance. The bells rung, run away. Six women battle royal. A goddamn legend. 
Face up, we're already trying to get Ariel out of the ring. Oh, Ariel's in trouble. Ariel hangs on. Space Hope are not working by the hour. Again, over the top rope. Both feet have to hit the floor. Becky in trouble. You have to wear your opponent down or have to make a pretty significant escape. Look at Beyonce teeing off already on Maurice. Yeah, I forgot about that NXT audience noise. I gotta avoid that from now on. Maurice over the top. Oh, Beyonce's eliminated already. Beyonce, the highest rated one in the match, and a swift clothesline, and Maurice has eliminated Beyonce. And Ariel's eliminated by Maurice. Maurice, back to back eliminations. She is killing it right now. Maurice has eliminated Beyonce and Ariel. I think she's the lowest ranked person in the match as well. Now she's got Space Oprah down. There's Roaring Elbow there by Brie Bella. So we lost our two biggest, well, uh, two of our three biggest stars. I mean, Space Oprah is the biggest star. She's fucking Space Oprah. She's trying to get the biggest threat at the moment out of this match. Maurice. It's also super easy to get eliminated in this game. It is. <laughs> If you make one mistake and you're not ready, you are out. Is that the positioning? Well, you get fire for it? Oh, yeah. Been talking about it all night. P1 Pinnacle coming up sometime later on in the year. I've been playing like fucking crazy. It's so goddamn good. It kills me I'm not playing it right now, but I'm here for y'all. Oh, Space Oprah. Looks like Becky's going to try to get Space Oprah out. Space Oprah blocked her. Ooh, and a drop kick by Maurice. This is very impressive performance by Maurice so far. Becky and Bree taking a breather. Space Hopper goes to town on Maurice. Another, there's a 600th NXT chant in this three minute match. There's a knockout punch there by Space Oprah. Space Oprah's got Maurice in trouble. Maurice on the on the apron. Space Oprah really trying to kick her off. Maurice exerted too much effort earlier on for those eliminations. Nope, she hangs on. Becky working on Bree. Bree fights Becky off. We lost, we lost Beyonce and Ariel super quickly. And now the other four women grinding it out here. Oh, Brie Bella clotheslines Becky Lynch over the top rope. Becky is gone. We are down to three. And now double teaming Space Oprah. The crowd does not like that. Oh, and look quick how quickly Maurice turns on Brie Bella. She has Brie in the corner. And she is going to clothesline Brie over the top rope. Maurice has eliminated three of the four women in this match. And we are down to two. The one who's been dominating this whole time, Maurice. And your current champion, Space Oprah. Marie sends Space Oprah off the ropes. Back elbow, Space Oprah blocks. Punch to the stomach. Oh, and she's looking for the jackknife. This is her finishing move. Space Oprah with a jackknife power bomb on Maurice. She picks her up. She will, no, well, she, I thought she was going to try to throw her out, but Maurice counters. That's just great booking. It's very true. Maurice throws Space Oprah over the top rope. One punch. Space Oprah blocks. Space Oprah was had her back against the wall and she fights off Maurice. Space Oprah hasn't done much. All I have to do is get that last elimination. Maurice, top rope. Space Oprah. Top rope Hurricane Rana. Perfectly executed. Space Oprah punches Maurice, knocks her down. I think she was trying to banking on punching her and having her lean up against the ropes. Space Oprah. Back elbow. A second one. A third for good measure. Maurice down again. Space Oprah. Nope, countered again. Okay, just joined the stream, but I am extremely angry what happened. I know, random Jeff is gone. Kenny Omega, that bastard.
Face Oprah. Nope. These guys back to just countering each other. And firemen's carry takeovers. Uh oh, Maurice got Space Oprah leaning up against the ropes, looking for a fourth elimination, and she's got it! Maurice has eliminated Space Oprah! Maurice eliminated four of the five women in this match and has become your new Heels and Heels champion! What a dominant, dominant performance! Some would say that she was the absolute underdog in this match, but it's no matter, Maurice is the new Heels and Heels champion! Maurice equals Roman Reigns tonight. Space Oprah almost pulled it out, but it is Maurice instead bringing that title home to Monroe Sky. Maurice went on a rampage tonight. And she'll defend that title next month. Uh, in fact, the next month's tournament will be after Pod Slam. It's going to be Wednesday, September 26th. The last stream before... Swaggle Mania 5 on October 14th, where I also can go ahead and announce uh, the one consistency with uh, Swaggle Mania the past couple years has been the, ex the extraordinary tag team and the random tag team of Wreck-It Ralph and a hockey player. Well, we, did, we accept this outcome fully, says the, the heels and heels themselves. Uh, well, they're back uh, to defend their Arcade Audio Tag Team Championships that I never made against two random teams... Space Oprah will get her revenge. Of people that we've seen throughout the year, uh, two stars of this year's Rumble, White Grimace and Reptar, and they will also take on the tag team of totally random introduced characters, Veg and Random Jeff. You know I'm already booking him. Veg and Random Jeff. They just look like they should be a tag team. They're going to Swoggle Mania against Wreck-It Ralph and a hockey player, a triple threat tag team match coming up here in just uh, several weeks. But now let's get back to the the, the, the Podswoggle Championship at hand. Let's see who else is joining Battle Bowl. And I see Dave's here, so you know what? Let's get in to some PCO. Shocked there was only a couple PCO creator wrestlers. Um, I thought there'd be more, but I'll, I'll take what I got. Uh, my representative, PCO... The man's had one hell of a comeback here, to say the least. He'll be taking on uh, Spencer's pick. Spencer, actually, if you listen to the podcast, originally had Ray Phoenix. But on spoiler this week's episode, he decides to go with the random Tama Tonga because he's going to take uh, Gorillas of Destiny in the, the tournament. And again, another random kid just living out his fantasy, I guess. Hannibal Watts is what came up when I searched for Tama Tonga. So that'll be who represents... Uh, ooh, I don't know which one to go with. We'll go with that one, because that way he doesn't have a, a shirt to confuse us. Uh, PCO and Hannibal Watts. So Spencer's last chance to get in on uh, on Battle Bowl, and my opportunity to get a second guy into Battle Bowl. Currently in Battle Bowl, we have Seth Rollins, Kenny Omega, Kevin Shatino, J uh, Johnny Cage, and The Predator. We already saw uh, one significant underdog win the whole thing in Maurice. Well, we have another one. Hannibal Watts basically looks like uh, Reggie Watts. Uh, did every steroid in the world. Got a good look, good name. I like it, you know. I'm going to have to... Kevin Owens' music. The man who's lit the wrestling world on fire and himself this year. Won't lie, I kind of want the Kevin and Hannibal tag team now. PCO. This man is insane. I don't think I can do anything really crazy, so we'll just move on. We'll see what 
uh, awaits us with Hannibal Watts. PCO's NXT run is going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, just a regular uh, good guy. Looks like Hannibal Watts. Nothing major to him. So we'll skip that and get into the, the ring. Yeah, I, I mean, if PCO... Ah, I want it so bad. Bill's running with Hannibal Watts is another huge man. Nice side headlock. PCO counters. That looks like the Shogun of Harlem, eh? Maybe that's his gimmick. That's his gimmick now. PCO take over. Back to a standing position. Hannibal Watts working on the arm of PCO. I like his gear, I like his look. I like this Hannibal Watts guy. This could be uh could be a another like Kevin Chitino, a, a, a nice new up and comer. There's a choke bomb by PCO though. Saying, fuck that, I want my comeback moment to conclude with a Podswoggle title run. PCO got him at a fireman's carry. Samoan drop. Two more undercard matches still to come. Ooh, that's nice. Big kick to the head by Hannibal Watts on PCO. Two more undercard matches still to come up. Still including two random characters. Uh, nobody knows who we're going to see. But we have Walter and Roman Reigns coming up. Uh, they'll each be wrestling somebody uh, you'll see very shortly. Nothing too random, but still funny nevertheless. PCO in firm control here over Hannibal Watts. Big European uppercut. Canadian uppercut. Stun gun. Stun gun by PCO. Cio sent over the top rope, and he's sent down to the floor by Hannibal Watts. Yeah, you don't want to be surrounded by anything, yeah, dangerous. Like that. Oh, PCO sending Hannibal Watts back first into the barricade. Jock Rougeau retired and PCO returned. Is there a one quadricus rule I don't know about? And Ray Rougeau isn't the French commentator on pay-per-views anymore for WWE. Let's see how he gets back into the ring. <laughs> like you said. PCO looking for a package pile driver on Hannibal Watts. I don't think that fro is really gonna be enough cushion for Hannibal Watts. Into the pin. Is this one over already? One. Two, no, two count only. I don't think that's. P I think that's just a signature for PCO. I think either the uh, the, the discus lariat or, the, of course, the cannonball senton. So PCO uses as finisher. There's a running Death Valley driver, and I think yet PCO's running doesn't know which corner to go to, setting him up for it. Cannonball time. Taking his time. No, it took too much time, in fact. Hannibal Watts started to get up. Someday Kevin Owens will inherit the title after PCO finally kills himself. He's not able to be killed. Well, that was a nice uh, like reverse rough rider there by Hannibal Watts. Oh, went for another choke bomb. Hannibal Watts blocked it. Told him to suck it, and now he's launched into his comeback. Two forearms. I like the charisma of this kid. Nice Pele kick on PCO. And PCO wasted too much time earlier going for that senton. There's a nice forearm shot. Kevin Owens and Sammy's in the new Quebecers. Fuck it, book it, love it. At least the new Rougeau's for the old Rougeau Brothers theme. That'd be sick. Hannibal Watts. Like going to that place where he has voices in his head? I don't know. There's an RKO by Hannibal Watts on PCO. Into the pin. Come on, PCO. Come on, PCO. Yes, PCO kicks out of two. Sorry, did you not watch those videos where it's clearly demonstrated PCO is not even 
I know. Yeah, he'll never die. He'll be PCO while that's the earth. Oh, went for some diving diving forearm and PCO blocked it. Hannibal Watts, though, again, very resilient with his reversals. Tilt the world DDT. Forearm shot. Jumping neck breaker. Stomping away. PCO can take so much punishment. So much abuse. Now the Watts top rope asking PCO to get up. What's he thinking of? Big tomahawk chop. PCO throws him off after maybe another RKO attempt. Kick to the back. Oh, and PCO is not selling that shit, let me tell you. But Watts keeps countering him. Belly to back suplex. Back elbow. PCO's. Oh, busted Watts open. There's a jumping DDT. Now he's going to ask Watts to get to his feet. And there's that big discus lariat. Turning Watts inside out. The pin cuts the ropes off. Count of two. And he got him. PCO is going to Battle Bowl. So Spencer has officially lost both of his participants. Spencer and Augie are officially out of the running to be Swoggle Squad champion for Podslam. Tope, Rich, and I each have a dog in the hunt. Look at this clothesline. Just totally took Watts out. Cage, Rollins, Shatino, Omega, Predator, PCO. We have two more spots to fill in Battle Bowl. Spencer should have taken Phoenix. <laughs> Probably. Phoenix is always pretty good. All right, next... Time to get Widden involved. Widden's only got one pick. Will this pick pay off? It's a damn good pick. It is Walter. Who will he wrestle? It'll be the random selection that came up for Chris Jericho. He did have a match the year with Brock. That's correct. When I search for Chris Jericho, I can't explain this in any way, shape, or form. What came up as the first pick? But the Chris O'Donnell Robin from Batman and Robin. I don't know why, but that's what happened. So Rich has Robin, Widden has Walter. Let's watch Walter kill Chris O'Donnell. It's a, it's a very good. Hey, Widden, perfect timing. It's your one chance. Hey, if you can win this, that'd be great. So Rich doesn't have half of Battle Bowl. That'd be awesome. I have two. Tope has one. Toby also gonna, he even has the bat nipples. Oh, the person put the, the well the work into making this Robin. Let me tell you. I just don't get why. Like, why did that come up when I searched for Chris Jericho? Just very random and weird. Of course, those of you keeping track at home, yes, that means that I made Roman Reigns the main event of the undercard. Just because I'm a shit kicker. I've skipped that Robin so many times. <laughs> well, here he is. I don't know why big ass W for Walter, maybe? I don't know. Awesome. Coming to you live from Baltimore. Oh, man, the music and everything. Fucking Walter is mean and is going to kill somebody. He's going to fuck some brackets up in March of Madness next year, let me tell you. This, man, if you guys heard the music they have, I mean, it's not his actual music, but it may be even more perfect for Walter. It is horrifying. Come on, 
point out, this is one of 20 picks that pissed me off the wooden head. That's right, every pick of this pissed me off. Here comes Robin. And this is some dope-ass entrances for this match. Specifically, Robin 97. You know, it's like every... The guys have years in the game. Just Robin gets one, too. And psych himself up here. Coming out of the darkness and the shadows. I remember when this is still Chris O'Donnell, so... Can't be that much of a badass. Ian seems a little cocky. Maybe this is the beginning of the movie. Walter's gonna fuck him up. <laughs> Bella's wrong. We are underway. That is an amazing Walter. For fuck's sake, that could have started off any better. Just that big ass boot around Robin Turman and a power bomb already. All right. Well, Walter wins. Everyone go home. Jesus Christ. I just wanted this to be done already. That would have been amazing if that was just it. That would have been so damn good. Oh, he's just kicking Robin like nobody's business. Boot bomb pin should have been the whole match. Oh, Jesus. I don't even know what he was going for. That was like a standing lariat chop. Would have sent him back to somehow, ugh, somehow Chris O'Donnell would have got become fucking what's his name, uh, Dick Ward, a oh, Burt Ward. Sorry. Oh God, Robin better just hope for the countout. He used a Kenny King philosophy against Braun Strowman. There you go. Robin's got to use a speed. Didn't even take Walter off his feet. And he uh, body checked him into the the apron. Dick Grayson, Burt Ward. Yeah, I, I got there. I made it. I figured it out. Jesus Christ, what a clothesline. I'm just going to, you know, just, just snap his neck, Walter. Just get it over with. Count is at seven. You know, Walter's going to get him back in the ring because he wants to put in more punishment. Now Robin will get him back in the ring. <laughs> I think Robin fought there a second. Do I really want to get back in there? Does Walter understand count? You bet he does. Oh, he just threw Robin back over the top rope. Walter just wants to hang out on the floor. Robert sees a, Walter sees a girly leg from the front row. Oh, Walter sent into the apron. Robin smashing him against the apron again. Count is at five. No, Count is now at five, sorry. Count is at six. Really want this to get back into the ring. As is Walter. Walter gets back in with Robin. And for a stomp on the back. Finally hits it. A kick. I just pause at him. He's just so big and beefy. One count only. But we have Walter and PCO and the Predator all in a battle royal. God knows what's going to happen. Kevin Chitino, and that's what we're talking about. Robin sends Walter into the corner. Tornado DDT. Oh, uh, did, did, it was a tornado DT, but instead hung him up out on the ropes instead of driving his head into the mat. Punch. Oh, look at the strength of Robin! Oh, and a, 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 an electric chair into a back elbow. Looks like some Cassius Ono type shit. And these back chops. Oh, and a smack right to the back of the face. Looks like he knocked Walter out with it. The pin. Two. No, Walter kicks out. 
The way Walter's leg buckled, it looked like Robin flat out knocked him unconscious. Second rope. Robin trying to get Walter up. Oh, went for the drop kick and he misses. Back, back, uh, back fist to the face is what I meant. Oh, and a big clubbing shot by Walter. This has been one hell of a match. Reverse DDT by Robin. Now Robin, why is he taking this time? He's got to stay on Walter. Kick to the stomach. Couldn't pay me enough to work Walter. <laughs> the only the only actual worker here, uh, Kirby and Kid Lucha Verde, Verde Luchador. All, all the gimmicks, no matter what it is. Yeah, it's like, nope, I'll, I'm will i good. Oh, nice Inziguri. Walter would make a damn good Batman villain. Just like a big, mean Austrian dude who just hits hard. Oh, big boot. It's all a big no thanks. <laughs> There's a, a single leg Boston Crab by Robin on Walter. Look how big those legs are. My God. He's just going to shoo him off like a fly. See, Robin's been in firm control recently, though. Walter's in trouble. Here it is. This quick karate thrust. The back of the hand onto the face of Walter. Count of two. No, Walter kicks out again. Robin cannot believe it. Robin thought he had it. Walter's in a lot of trouble. Robin just wearing him down. Walter sent into the corner. Can't look at the quick deadlift gut wrench. Oh boy. <laughs> look at he's gonna walk up and just slap him right in the face. Oh, deadlift power bomb. Deadlifts Robin off the mat and into a power bomb. He's gonna drag him into the middle of the ring. Walter, the pin. One. Two, two count only. Went, oh, went for more work on the neck. Got a back elbow. Robin, Hurricane Rana. Pin. God, Walter's so big, it looks like his leg is still causing a rope break. Two count only. Robin's trying to win it, but Walter just ain't having it. Oh, Walter's now busted open by Robin. See how seeing his own blood will affect the big man. Oh, looking for this electric tear knockout elbow. He's just trying to knock Walter out. It's the only chance he has. Rolls him over. The pin. Did he knock Walter out this time? Count of two. Yes, he did. Robin defeats Walter. Walter sure got some big shots in, but Robin dominated the second half of that match. Just by merely sheer blunt force into the face and head and back of the neck of Walter. Chris O'Donnell prevails over Walter. Here it is one more time. Boom! Just knocked him flat out. He's going on to Battle Bowl. So Rich officially, I'm sad but not disappointed. Well, Widden, that was fun. So officially, Spencer, Widden, and Augie are all out of the running to become Swaggle Squad champion. Rich will have a 50% chance of keeping it. I will have uh, either a uh, 3 out of 8 chance or a 25% chance. Tope will have either 1 out of 8 or 25% chance because it's time for our final match. Determine our last spot. In the whole damn thing. Tope really wanted to uh, really wants to be champion. So, Roman Reigns. My pick. I don't know if I would be scared more to work Walter or Batman. Uh, this is my random pick for Elias. Uh, and it is another Mortal Kombat character I know nothing about. Aaron Black. Or Aaron Black, if someone can help me say that. I don't know how it works. He uh, basically looks like Cowboy Deadpool to me. Um... Yeah, for the sake of time, we'll skip entrances. 
Uh, let's do it. Didn't even know it was a Mortal Kombat character until I looked up the name. Tope has Kenny Omega. It is Aaron. Okay, so Aaron Black and Roman Reigns. Uh, I could have Aaron Black, PCO, and Johnny Cage. Or Tope could have Kenny Omega and Roman Reigns. go Roman comes right out of the gate with an overhead belly to belly suplex AA Ron Black <laughs> I'll take it he looks he looks very weird he looks like he looks like Gunner trying to do a Game of Thrones indie gimmick Aaron Black should be in the WCW ring Nice overhead by Aaron Black. Off the ropes. Big splash. Roman, despite being like the highest rated person in the game, has had an up and down year. So he got eliminated early on in March of Madness. But of course, set what I'm sure will be an insurmountable record in the Pod Swoggle Rumble, eliminating 10 men and lasting a half an hour. In this year's uh, Potswoggle Rumble. So it horrifies me to, for him to be in a battle royal again. So I'm really hoping that my boy Aaron Black. Nice reverse suplex there on Roman Reigns. That guy's got bells and whistles on him, let me tell you. Big clothesline by Roman. Oh, Aaron fights him off. Uppercut. Snap belly to back suplex. Front. Oh. Fisherman suplex by Aaron Black. Roman just getting tossed around, chucked around this ring. Front headlock by Aaron Black. Went for another suplex. Roman scouted it this time. Fights Aaron off. Just scoops him right up and slams him down. Strategically placed elbow into the chest. Two of them, in fact. Running off the ropes. Just getting some laps in, I guess. And a snap suplex. That head scissors around the legs of uh, the head, sorry. Here in black. Black escapes. Running another reversal. Backbreaker on Aaron Black. Superman punch. The yawn was not intended, but it worked. Superman punch set him up for the spear by Roman Reigns on Aaron Black. Black prone in the ring. Roman into the pin. The cover. One, two, and that is it. <laughs> That was incredibly quick. Roman Reigns is your winner. Should have added him to that ban list. Ugh, that's a shitty spear. But it was enough to get the job done. He will be going to Battle Bowl. Roman Reigns could become Pod Swoggle Champion tonight. Thanks, Tope. The field is set. We have our seven lethal lottery winners. We have our champion. It's time to battle ball. Winning the first match of the evening, defeating Andrade Cien Almas, was Johnny Cage. Winning the second match of the evening, Defeating AJ Styles, a Cinderella story of Kevin Shatino. Winning the third match of the evening. Uh, and a controversial countout victory was Seth Rollins.
Where do you, I, can't, I forgot the alphabet. When in the fourth match of the evening, tearing out all of our heart, hopes and dreams, so especially random Jeffs, was the cleaner, Kenny Omega. When in the fifth match of the evening, and a good one against uh, up-and-comer Hannibal Watts, was PCO. When in the sixth match of the evening, a great match against Walter was... 1997 Robin Chris O'Donnell one of the last match you just saw was Roman Reigns defeating Aaron Black and who are they all going after they're going after the champ your current pod swoggle champion the predator who boy let's do the damn thing Tope and I each have a 25% chance of walking out of here as champion. Rich has a 50% chance of walking out as champion. Tope represented by Kenny Omega and Roman Reigns. I am represented by PCO and Johnny Cage. Rich is represented by Seth Rollins, Kevin Chitino, Robin, and the Predator. He only lost Andrade Cien Almas and Random Jeff earlier on. Let's see all eight men make their way into the ring so we can get also the champion's introduction. Oh, it's in Baltimore. Rich loves him in Baltimore. Let's go, Kevin. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely the most inspirational story here. I mean, this could be a great capper under the year of PCO. Seth Rollins, of course, the storyline of him becoming the, the fifth ever two-time Podswoggle champion. Johnny Cage could become the second Mortal Kombat character after the inaugural champion Scorpion won the title. Let's see, Johnny Cage, he also is an incredibly giant man for whatever reason. Kevin Chitino could become, uh, to my knowledge, uh, let me check the, the list here. Yeah, he'd be. Um, uh, besides Rich, Camelucci, and myself, <laughs> the only uh, straight up like thing that doesn't exist in pop culture to win this goddamn thing. I mean, I see it now. He's basically like a little mini Tommaso Ciampa. He's in good shape. You gotta give him that much. He's not scared. He's ready to go. He comes out to Ciampa's 2K theme. This man's been there before. This man won the Money in the Bank tournament two years ago. Seth freaking Rollins. Uh, Seth actually lost the title in, uh, oh, he lost in the Elimination Chamber. I thought he lost it in Battle Bowl before. Rocking some, uh, the old wing WWE title there. Very cool. This is over the top rope. Yes, Caribbean kid. Typical battle bowl, battle royal. We saw Maurice dominate the heels and heels one earlier. Eliminated four of the other five competitors in the whole thing as the lowest ranked competitor. So there's no rhyme or reason to it. Okada is a former. It is anyone's game. Okada is a former uh, Potswoggle champion. He's the only New Japan representative. Well, technically, Zack Sabre Jr as well. Can Kenny Omega Oh, I'm sorry. And Kota Bushi. So something else Kota Bushi has done that Kenny Omega has not is be Podswoggle champion. Can Omega join his gold lover as a Podswoggle champion? Um, I don't know the age on Thanos. <laughs> 
I'm sure he's very old, um, but PCO would probably become the oldest winner of the title if he wins. Triple H won in his late 40s. Cena won in his early 40s. But again, you're getting the semant. I mean, Captain Crunch is an old fucking sea captain, so that's that's uh, neither here nor there. Oldest human. There you go. Thank you. Oldest human. There has never been an out and out superhero as champion. We've had some super villains. Uh, I mean, old Drax the Destroyer is, I guess, a Marvel superhero. So no DC uh, heroes. Um, I did win. I announced two, and I'm announced a third one right now. So we announced TJP versus Ricky Morton in a loser leaves Podswoggle match, and I also announced uh, Wreck It Ralph and a hockey player versus White Grimace and Reptar versus Veg and Random Jeff in a triple threat tag match. I announced one more here. And it's the biggest one, and I've mentioned some of these guys already. Need some DLC, need some DC love. Uh, this is a co-main event at Swoggle Mania. Uh, th three of the most dominant men in the history of our streams, with all intertwined storylines with one another. Let me talk over this Roman Reigns entrance. It will be Thanos. Versus Braun Strowman versus Zack Sabre Jr. in a 30 minute triple threat Iron Man match. The only back to back live two time March of Madness winner and the man who made Thanos tap out this year. In controversial fashion, Thanos still won the match. Thanos also beat Braun Strowman for the championship last year. But Braun has never been pinned to lose the title. Thanos was never pinned to lose the title. No one's more matches than Zack Sabre Jr. The three of them, one ring, 30 minutes, most pins or submissions is going to take it all. That one is going to be, that's a main event anywhere. It's not going to be for the championship, but it's going to be definitely one of the two headlining matches of Swoggle Mania. They all, we need to settle it. Zack Sabre Jr. was robbed. Braun has been robbed. Thanos has been robbed. Put them all in one ring. See who's the best. Who's the best right now? You will use your current reigning defending Pod Swoggle champion. Last month, he defeated Vader in incredibly dominating fashion. Then he went through the elimination chamber, and despite a, a, a heroic effort by Zangros, came out the champion. It is the Predator. He's got a movie coming out. He's a celebrity and all. But he ain't no part-timer here for Podswoggle. He intends on keeping that belt for a very long time. He is your champion. And this is whoever wins this, they got to get through one more tournament, and they're getting a payday in the main event of Swoggle Mania. This would be huge if he retained. It'd be one hell of a retention. Captain Crunch retained through a Money in the Bank and through an Elimination Chamber. No champion has ever retained through a Battle Royal or a Rumble. Uh, walking into Battle Bowl before as champion, where it was uh, uh, Garrick Bischoff. He lost to EC3 two years ago. And last year, uh, Captain Crunch was the one. This was finally the match that ended the longest reign in Potswoggle title history. Captain Crunch lost to Rusev last year. Uh, my poor title so beat up with the Predator done to it. Eight men, one ring, one title. The bell's rung. This is going to be madness. I have no idea how I'm going to call this. Running Liger Bomb by Omega on Kevin Chitino right out of the gate. Predator stand in the middle of the ring just wanting somebody to hit him. Just got V-triggered by Omega. PCO was almost already eliminated by Johnny Cage. This is a demolition derby if I've ever seen it. 
first time we ever got eight guys in the ring at once. We never hit it for the rumble. Can he beating up a kid again? What he's good at. Everyone just slugging out. Robin being smart, trying to stay away from the action. Seth not afraid of the Predator at all. PCO and Johnny Cage have been hooked up a bunch of times. Roman doing nothing in the corner. Seth just hit a, a Skywalker on Predator. The roundhouse kick to Roman is what took him down. Predator just threw Roman over the top rope. Again, it'd be huge if you can get rid of Roman Reigns in this thing. One punch, two punches, and a third. Roman Reigns is the first person that has been eliminated by the Predator. Some may say the odds on favorite in this thing because of who he was in the Rumble this year. And, of course, I don't think my wife noticed that that quickly Roman Reigns is out of a battle royal. But they've actually got alcohol poisoning from him earlier. And Kevin Chitino just eliminated Johnny Cage. So I have lost one, and Tope has lost one already. Rich's odds get better and better. Of course, the Predator goes after the toughest opponent first. Smart. It's a way to do it. So we lost Roman, and we lost Johnny Cage. Omega's got... Predator on the ropes. He's trying to tilt him, uh, tip him out from the legs. That is not Robin, that is Nightwing. <laughs> Thank you very much. A big shot by the Predator. So my only hope is PCO. Tope's only hope is Kenny Omega. And Rich has everything else. He's got Seth Rollins. If Kevin Chitino could get rid of AJ Styles and Seth Rollins in this turn, it'd be amazing. Tell that to Batman forever. Six men are left. Again, Predator paired off with his biggest competition in terms of rating, I think, Kenny Omega. Oh, Swanton attempt by Shatino. Rollins got out of the way. Robin in the critically paying film, Batman and Robin. Again, Robin going after, like, a, a big old villain in PCO. Nerd argument ensues. Robin trying to get PCO out is Seth Rollins and... Predator take... Oh, wait a minute. Omega's getting set up for a, a cop killer by Kevin Shatino. Oh, that's going to hurt Omega so much. I don't know why Shatino didn't use that as a rumble finisher, though. Big shoulder tackle by PCO. Of course, uh, I was champion for Podslam last year. Tope was two years ago. We're both trying to get back there. Rich could be champion for the first time during Podslam. Rollins has Shatino up against the ropes. Super kick, Shatino hangs on. The kid's still in it. Oh, and he survives. What a counter by Kevin Shatino. Rollins thought he had him with a super kick and he hung on. Predator has PCO by the throat. If anybody could kill PCO, it'd be the Predator. Choke slams PCO over the top rope. We're gonna get a replay of that. My God, I am eliminated. So I will not be champion. It is down to Kenny Omega for Tope and all of the other four participants for Rich. Predator is eliminated too. Oh, Robin went for the super kick and he hits it and Predator hangs on. Same thing as Shatino Predator still in. Whew. Of course, PCO took the biggest, dumbest, ugliest fucking bump. Omega working on Rollins, a dream match anywhere you go. Another huge choke slam by the Predator on Robin. Kevin Shachino just, oh, Omega's eliminated Rollins. Kenny Omega has eliminated Seth Rollins. The Predator has Kevin Shachino hooked up. Oh, the same exact spot as PCO. The kid is out, Kevin Shachino, what an effort. The Predator has choke slammed him over the top rope. We are down to three. Rich has the Predator and Robin. Tope has Kenny Omega. Omega's got Robin on the ropes. Omega knocks Robin off. Robin's been eliminated. It's down to the best bout machine. It's down to the Predator. Clothesline. Omega's got Predator on the ropes. One punch. Two punches. And a third. Kenny Omega. The best bout machine. The number one wrestler in the world. Your current IWGP champion from behind has taken the Predator out of this match. We have a new 
new, 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 new Pod Swoggle champion, which means we have a new Swoggle Squad champion. Rich, the odds were in his favor, but Kenny Omega has avenged the death of Kevin Gentino and PCO and has become champion. Tope will be Swoggle Squad champion throughout Pod Slam. That is how you book a battle royal, boys. Kenny Omega next month has a chance to main event Swoggle Mania with that title on the line. Some would say it was an easy route because he beat Random Jeff, but forget that. He beat the Predator at his own game. He eliminated Seth Rollins and Robin as well to win the whole thing. Kenny Omega. Now both gold lovers have reached the pinnacle of the sport. He is your pod swoggle champion, and we'll see him next month. Whew, for our last official tournament before Swoggle Mania 5. There's so much to pitch, so much to promote. Like I said, it's our last stream before Pod Slam, guys. Pod Slam is our annual. Oh, you're very welcome for the fun, David C. That's why he's the best bout machine. Spencer's here. Kenny Omega is your current champion. A Pod Slam, September 22nd. It's going to be starting at 12 Central. It's going to be available. Literally just got here in time for this match, and we're done. We're 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 not we're almost not live, pal. Uh, Arcadeaudio.net/slash/podslam is where you can find. And Rip <laughs> and Rich is here just in time to see his 50% chance go up in flames. Rich, you had a 50% chance. At the end, you had an 80% chance. An 80% chance to hold on to the belt, but instead, Kenny Omega is your new champion. Tope is your new Swoggle Squad champion. Let's start the stream over. It'll be available on YouTube for you to watch. Go to youtube.com slash podswoggle, and you'll be able to check out the whole thing there. But like I was saying, Pod Slam, check out the page. Uh, donate now. Uh, you can uh, watch it on Twitch day of. It's an NWO run in to close the show. Um... But yeah, please, your support for Pod Slam is so very appreciated. We have an amazing slate of shows we're going to be talking about over the next uh, three weeks before we actually get there. Um, uh, the IO Theater Chicago, if you're in Chicago, if you can make it, please, 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 please come out live and check out the amazing. We have the biggest uh, slate of shows we've ever had. It's going to be awesome. Rich's Hogan, Spencer's Nash, uh, <laughs> Stan the Dread Bears Hall. They're going to stun gun Omega and get some spray, uh, some spray cans. Uh, as I mentioned, Swoggle Mania 5 coming up October 14th. We announced three big-ass matches for Swoggle Mania. We're going to announce more over the coming weeks on the podcast, so make sure you're listening to the podcast. Uh, Pod Swoggle is available on all the uh, podcasting platforms. Of course, arcadeaudio.net as well, along with the other shows in our network. If you like the show, support us, patreon.com slash arcadeaudio. You can jump in on our sweet, sweet Discord or get bonus content from uh, this show or any of the other ones in our network. Follow us on all social media, not only us, but like I said, Podslam as well. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, this stream will be available for those of you who missed it and any other stream on YouTube. Also, be make sure you're following YouTube because I'm not sure. Um, the, the P1 Pinnacle on Fire Pro Wrestling is not going to start um, for uh, a couple months. But just in case you miss it, I'll have announcements. It definitely is going to be over there. I don't know if it's going to be live streaming in any fashion um, besides me just recording it throughout the days. Um, I might, I might just like after this record for like, or I might just stream 15, 20 minutes, the, uh, fire pro. So guys, everyone can see it. The discord is just too sweet. Potswoggle, gmail.com, uh, all that good stuff. Yada, yada, yada. Thank you guys so much for the support. Again, in the next stream, we, uh, after pod slam September 26th, we will see Kenny Omega defend that sweet, sweet belt on, um, everyone's wanting me to do it, so I'll do it. Um, we'll be defending that title against who knows who else in just our last official tournament. Whew, I'm out of breath. I gotta go switch the game over, it looks like. Thank you guys for listening and watching, whether it be here live on Twitch or on YouTube for uh, the entire Swoggle Squad. This is your host, Mullet, signing out for the Pod Swoggle title tournament live on Twitch. We'll catch you next month.